Going down the St. James Infirmary And saw my baby there She was laid out on a cold white table So cold, so white, so fair Let her go, let her go, God bless her Hey friends, how's it going? This is David Potts with Song Notes, and today's lesson will be for the song St. James Infirmary Blues. So this one's coming in by request to Gil. Gil, thanks for your support on Patreon. Uh, you mentioned this song, and this is actually one that I've been meaning to do for a while, so you requested the right song at the right time. I'm going to do a lesson for it now. So um, heads up, this will be for uh, St. James Infirmary Blues, obviously, like I said. A classic, classic blues song. Now, I'm going to be making this very like easy, accessible uh, version of the song, okay? There's a lot of nuance and a lot of like expert fills and licks and all kinds of stuff I could get into that I'm not going to. I'm going to start this one off really easy because I probably will do future lessons on this song and uh, I just want to make that clear. So I'm going to be doing this in A minor, okay? Lots of times you see it in D minor, but I think A will be a bit more beginner friendly, okay? So we're going to do A minor and also with the progression, there's going to be certain chords that I'm going to sort of steer towards the easier, more obvious thing, right? Like I'm not going to use a D minor at all. I'm not going to use a C at all. I'm going to keep the turnaround nice and simple. I'm just going to stay on A minor. So all you nitpickers out there will notice that stuff. But again, I'm just keeping this nice and simple and you can build with this as you learn it, right? So um, let's get to this lesson. Here's the timestamps, obviously, and the, the PDF of what I'm showing you, you can find on playsongnotes.com, right? The notes and tabs. It's a great way to follow along outside this uh, video. But let's get to the lesson first, right? Now you saw the playthrough there. We're going to start off by looking at the chords. There's only a few and that makes this really nice. So uh, we're going to have an A minor chord, okay? So that's basically you know, the thinnest five strings, right? Open fifth string, second fret, second fret, and then first fret on the second string and open uh, high E string, okay? The next chord will be an E major. Now E major is great because you're coming from A minor, right? And when you go from A minor to E major, you're keeping your three fingers in the same exact relative formation, right? Like fighter jets flying overhead, they are in a tight like flying V of finger position and all you're doing is moving them towards your face one string, right? So it's E is open sixth string, fifth um, open sixth string, second fret, second fret, first fret, open, open, okay? So A minor to E, back to A minor. You wanna get comfortable doing that. Just take it slow, you know, um, if you're new to this, and just find a tempo that works where you can switch smoothly and then practice it, you know, day after day, and then you'll slowly get the speed, right? So the next chord we'll look at is an E7. Okay, this is based on the E major chord. All we're doing, the way I like to play it, is adding your pinky to the third fret of the second string, right? That's gonna be your E7. Now, the thing about this chord I'll say is number one, you don't need it. You can just use the E wherever you see the E7 and it'll sound fine. And the other thing is lots of times this pinky is the last note that I get into place on this chord, okay? And the, the note I want to say is when you're switching to this chord and you're trying to play through the song, just go to an E, think of it as an E major with this note added. If you mess up this note, you know, you don't push it down hard enough, the E is still going to sound good. So make sure you're not sacrificing the E even if this note is giving you some trouble, okay? Because you don't want that to stumble you up. But basically, uh, those are the first three chords. And the last chord is an F. Now, F, I'm not gonna show you the full bar chord F. I mean, if, if you know that, that's great, right? First, sec, uh, first, third, third, second, first, first. But instead of doing this, what we're gonna be doing is simplifying it by only playing the middle four strings here, okay? So, this is how I like to play the F at least, right? The other way I'll show you is like this. Just the second, third, and fourth string. Okay, um, but this way is basically, there's no barring involved and it's, you're just using your four fingers, right? Uh, so starting on the fifth string, it's third fret, third fret, second fret, first fret, okay? And the thing about this chord, if you don't know it yet, is it's very similar to a C major, okay? Now, or there's no C major in this song, but check this out anyway. If I go from a C major and I keep my index and ring where they are, all I'm gonna do is move my middle finger to one thinner string, one th th string thinner, and move my pinky down next to my ring finger, okay? Check out how similar the F, this, this F is versus this C. Okay, so um, I share with you this because I found that this F was easier for me to learn when I thought of it as a similar chord to the C, okay? And then once you have that shape, you can start using it in other songs. So we have the A minor. 
we have the E, the E7, and then this F, okay? And again, if you want to keep it even simpler, you could just do a fourth, third, and second string. Okay, with your ring finger, middle finger, and index finger, okay? Third fret, second fret, first fret on the fourth, third, and second string. And only play those strings if you can, right? And that's the key with these Fs, is you don't want to play, if you're playing the simplified versions, you don't want to really, um, you don't want to play the, the, the thickest or thinnest string unless you're muting them. Here I'm muting them. So even if I do play them, they don't make a sound, right? Because these fingers, the thumb right here is lightly touching it, and my sort of index finger here is lightly touching it. So when that's happening, the string is deadened, okay? So these, those are the chords you're gonna need. Now make sure you get comfortable with those chords. If, if it's, um, you know, you're taking the song slowly the first day, try to get those chords under your belt, even if the switches are slow, you just wanna learn them, and then practice, you know, the, the switching speed will, will come with practice and you'll be good to go. But now let's look at this song itself. So the chord progression of this song, um, so it's gonna look like this. We basically have four lines, all right? So we're gonna, uh, each line has two measures of four counts. Right? So in this first line, for example, from left to right, I'm just gonna be on A minor for two counts. One, two, T, E, two, and then to A minor, and stay on it for two more counts, right? So it's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, uh, I'm putting A minor again because we're gonna start learning strumming right now, which is basically this. For the first uh, thing you do with strumming in this song, I would just strum every quarter note, okay? So one, two, three, four. Down strum, down strum, down strum, down strum. So let's go in the first line here. Uh, a minor to E to A minor. So four strums of A minor. Then you go to A minor to F to E. And then E7. And third line. Same as the first line, right? And this is the fourth line. F to E to A minor to now you could do that and you could start singing and you would sound just fine, right? I mean, like, real quick. I went down to the St. James Infirmary, two, three, four. I saw my baby there. You could do the E7, do it. She was laid out on a cold white table. So cold, so white, so fair. Okay, just find a tempo that works for you and just do all down strums. That's the best way to start off with this song. Now, I'll say from there, you can spice up the strumming a few different ways. So one thing you could do is basically, for every strum, instead of doing the one, two, three, four, on the one count, we're gonna pluck the root, the thickest note of the chord, and then on the two count, we'll strum the rest of the chord. So it would sound like this if I just play the A minor over and over again. Right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And you could do the whole progression like that. So it would simply be, I went down to the St. James Infirmary. I saw my baby there. She was laid out on a cold white table. So cold, so white. Okay, starting to come together now, right? And the next thing I would recommend doing with the strumming is to basically start bringing in some up strums, right? Because your hand's already moving. And if you can do this, it adds a lot of uh, cool sound to it. So basically, we're gonna try to do this. So down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, 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 down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, 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 down, down, up, right? So down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, up, down. You can do the root thing if you want. It's up to you. Um, another little trick with the strumming is, if you look at these counts here, um, on the three count of the first measure, you're, and, the, and the one count that starts the second measure, on the up strum that comes right before those, you can basically remove your left hand from the fretboard as you're doing the chord switch. So you're gonna strum like empty strings. Check this out, so. Then,
okay? So that's a nice little way to make the song feel more organic and raw. And then the final trip I'll say with the strumming is you could start to, um, on your up strums, maybe just strum one or two strings. And here's what I mean by that. Nice little way to add nuance is doing that. Just when in your casual up strums, try to grab just one or two of those strings and change it if you can. It adds some nice accent. So what are some other tricks I would recommend with strumming? Um, one would be basically, uh, you could do some palm muting down here. So what that's gonna refer to is basically putting your fleshy part of your hand against the little saddle of the guitar here. So when you strum a chord, instead of getting a sound like that, you're gonna sort of get a muffled sound like this. If you're, if you're moving up the strings, it's gonna kill the sounds altogether. You wanna move it down just so you're t barely touching the strings. And basically, check out this effect you get. Okay, that's one little effect you can do. Another one is to bring in a raked strum, right? So that's gonna be where we're basically gonna, we're gonna do that. We're, instead of doing a single fast motion, we're gonna do a sort of a slow, I kinda, I kinda, instead of doing a straight line across the strings, like perpendicular to the strings, I kinda make a curved shape. Because what that does is I can move my hand fast still, but it's creating a longer like travel distance or something. I'm not really good at geometry, right? But the pick can move the same speed, but you get that raked sound. It's almost like you're scooping a, you know, rocks or something, right? And you kind of get this in House of the Rising Sun, which is a very similar song to this. And what I mean by this is, uh, check this out. You could listen, listen for the rake that I incorporate into the chord progression here, right? Let it go, let it go, God bless her, wherever she may be. She may search this wide world over, but you'll never find a sweet man like me. Okay, I was doing a bit of a rate, an exaggerated one there, but you could use it to wherever, whatever place you want. You just want to make sure you keep the timing because the rake it's not adding any counts to your measure like the measure should the rhythm should stay the same all right so with all those little strumming tips i showed you you should be good to go for this song every measure uses the same progression and you're just going to play through and um you know you'll be in good shape with uh whether you want to keep it simple down strums right or if you want to do something like that. It's totally up to you. But with that said, we're going to move in next into some of the lead fills you can do to incorporate these into the progression itself. Okay, so long story short, here's the progression that I just showed you. What we're going to look at is in the final two, three, and four count of each of the four lines, we're going to do a little bit of um, just bluesy kind of fills while we keep our overall rhythm. Then we're going to return to strumming, right? So it's strum, 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 strum. Da, 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 da. Okay, so we're gonna, well, I'll show you all those fills and we'll be in good shape. Now, basically, long story short, in summary, we're just gonna be using the A minor blues scale here, okay? So, when teaching this scale, I recommend first you look at it um, in this sort of chart form. It's chart form in case it helps your head or your eyes or whatever, right? This is basically a way to see this box you're playing in here. So basically, uh, the scale, I'm going to kind of go through it quickly just to kind of give you the ideas. Um, reading from bottom to top, we have from thickest to thinnest, right? So you see open fret, sixth string, third fret, sixth string, open fret, fifth string, third fret, fifth string, open first, second on the fourth string, open third, second on third, and then you see what there for the, the B and the, the E string as well. So first and third on the B string and open and third on the high E string. 
So if we were just to play all these notes in sort of a steady sequence, I'm not going to make this a lesson on this scale though. I just want to make I want to make sure that it's clear that these are all the notes I'm pulling from when I show you these fills. So I'm going to show you four different fills and all these fills are going to be coming from this scale. And it, they're basically going to be just freely playing, you know, with these notes in ways that sort of sounds good based on the the chord we're coming from. And we do the fill and we end up on a chord. So you do want to have a little bit of just um, sound awareness of does this sound good as I transition from this chord to this chord, right? So basically, let's look at this. Uh, let's look at the first of these exercises, which is going to be um, based on our A minor position with our left hand here. The idea, if you can, is on the sixth string and then to the fifth string, we're going to go open to third on the sixth string and then open to third on the fifth string, back to open fifth string, back to third sixth string and we're gonna end up on the open fifth string, okay? So we're only using these notes. Those four notes, but we're playing them in this order. Okay? Then do the A minor. Okay, we can strum it. And this is a great way to practice it, just go in a sort of circular manner, right? If you can't position your hand in the A minor position and use your pinky, you could just use your index finger, um, index, middle, or ring finger, and then rest your hand, open fifth string, A minor. Okay, that's the first little riff we're gonna do there. Um, and we could, you know, use that in the first line, say, right? I went down to St. James Infirmary to see my baby there. And let's look at this second riff here. Um, the second one we're going to do is going to start on this fourth string. It's going to go from second to first to open. Okay? Middle finger, index finger, open. And then. This is very similar to that first riff, right? Third fret, fifth string. Third fret to open, fifth string. Sixth fret, um, sixth string, third fret, and then open, fifth string again. So, right? That's the second fill, right? So we could use that on the second line. To see my baby there. Okay? So you can use these riffs however you see fit. Let's look at the second and the third and fourth ones there. Now the third one is gonna be. Okay, that's the third one, right? So uh, third and second string. Open third string. And keep your hand in the A minor position. That's the key, right? All you're doing is lifting up your ring finger and going down to second fret on that. Okay, open to second on the third string, and then your hand's already in first fret, second string, to third fret, second string. Okay, first, third, first, and then back to next string. Second, open, second, second, open, second. The last riff will be this one, to, um, so. Right? Uh, third to open on the highest string, third to first on the second string, and then second open second on the third string. So. So there you go. So you put those riffs together and you're going to have some fun. And let's see what that sounds like. Okay, so now I'll just play through the progression uh, one full time and I'll do each riff where I said it was in the order I showed them, right? So basically, remember, it's, a, it's the last couple counts. And the thing I'll say about this is you really wanna, um, on the, the final A minor strum you do, right before the riff, you do wanna get a, a strum in there or at least the bass note of the A minor. 
Because what that does is it helps establish that chord that comes on the one count in the second measure of each line, okay? So. So that's going to be it for this lesson. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope this was helpful for you as a nice introduction into this very cool, fun song. So I expect I'll do more lessons on this one in the future as I learn it better and play it in more advanced, fun ways. All kinds of bluesy nuance you can add. So I recommend you just look online, YouTube, Spotify, all kinds of cool versions, and you can learn a lot. So uh, this has been David Potts. Thanks for all of you for watching this far. Thanks to those of you who have supported me through kind comments, emails, through my tip jar, my website, through my Patreon. Uh, page. It all helps support me and uh, it's really much appreciated. But that's going to be it for this lesson. So have a great night. Take care.